It's like we're the last of a dying breed. I just can't stand by and watch people suffer or do crazy things to them. It's just not in me at all, right? But we're now seeing more and more generations where they give a shit. They spit on you. They laugh about it. They blog it and film it. And this is weird. <laughs> but these leaders that have so much capital seem to watch as everybody crumbles that literally could have been saved if they just decided not to have one day in Monaco. That's more reptilian, just so you understand where that comes from. And some of the ancestors were also like that naturally. Elon had this demon mode. This is the profile of the, the villain. Why? That crazy childhood is like formula for entities that like to possess. The reptile can excel at many things, especially like battles and that kind of stuff. But when it comes to empathy and love, no. In that group, family thing, no. That's, that's not what that brain is designed to do. Now I'm gonna show you a few things that gives me the speculation that Marduk is in Elon Musk, whether he knows it or not. And this is one. The following clip has been taken from a Tribe Vibe special called The Book of Power. In this exploration of hidden truths and human potential, we unravel the threads connecting ancient Sumerian wisdom to modern tech pioneers revealing the unseen architecture of our reality and the forces that shape human consciousness. What you're about to discover might fundamentally alter your inner standing of existence and your untapped potential. Anchor yourself as we venture beyond the veil. Elon Musk is called on stage by Donald Trump. I was gonna have the footage and decide I wouldn't waste my time. And said, he had a black hat on, he said, I'm not only, as you can see, I'm not only MAGA, MAGA, I'm dark, gothic, dog MAGA, okay? That's another one, so that goes in the files. Another thing that was mentioned on that same interview with Johnny Harris was one of his colleagues, older man, definitely very influential, mentioned Elon had this demon mode, damn near, a very dark side, and he said he saw it more when he was acquiring Twitter than anything. So this is just from somebody else's mouth saying, this guy had a whole nother side to him that was unfathomable for people who follow him. Okay, so we're just taking notes. Now I'm gonna show you a few things that gives me the speculation that Marduk is in Elon Musk, whether he knows it or not. And this is one, generally when Marduk enters into a body, the body starts looking like this around the chin. Okay, so this chin area, now this, this image in itself was later on debunked as a hoax, right? But the SAALM, which was this organization that was really putting out all this information a while ago, it was like a lot of their stuff ended up debunked, but then there was a weird, eerie truth to it, almost like it was counterintelligence in a certain way. But there was this kind of face, and I had more pictures of different people who had seemed to be possessed by this entity who had took that drop jaw. Now, I don't have a picture of Elon right now, but you'll notice that same thing. Like when he's smoking weed on the uh, interview with, when he's smoking weed on the interview with uh, um, Joe Rogan, once he hits it, take a look at when he sits back and when he does the chin, because it'll be exactly that way. And then you'll start seeing more and more like, hmm, it seems like this area is a bit more pronounced. Okay, well, let's go into some of the archives here. So I have this guy, and he's Japanese. He makes no videos in English. And he posts like 30 times a day. I had to unsubscribe. And he was going on and on and on about that Da Vinci had already disclosed the alien relationship between humanity and that that's what he was really painting and that many of his paintings featured these characters that had these elongated heads, right? And they also pointed out even the elongated chins like the Habsburg. And then there was just a whole dossier, and this will have to be laid out for next Tribe Vibes, of just showing how the empire of Marduk or the Sumerians, if you may, which kind of broke themselves down into numbers and symbols because that's what works on the left hemispheres of the brain. 
embedded their entire pantheon and hierarchy within the actual ruling and governmental structures to this very day. And that it never needed to be a lot of them. <laughs> they work top down. So they control the rulers that nobody has access to, like your Trumps, your Elon, whoever's running most of the stuff. They possess them, and then it's top down from there. But back in the day, they didn't just possess them. They interbred with them because that was the whole reptilian agenda. It was to interbreed. This is the original samurai. It was to interbreed with the human species, but it wasn't like what we see is like, now when they be explaining this, even almost imagine a cold alien spacecraft with advanced technology and them in there splicing DNA and all this kind of stuff. This is the visual that comes up when they're teaching people about this right now, right? They want the clicks. But the ancient accounts record this as a rapier, basically a, a raper that it really just intermingled with the tribes and birthed more offspring until eventually you had so much of the original Draco and original Orion and the original uh, Assyrian blood within the tribes. And then the tribes would go to war with each other because the actual, the, their parents, if you may, or the entities that they corresponded to would use them, speak to them. OK, and this is where the whole thing, as we uncovered in last tribe, I was about the spirits talking. Right. So they would speak to the ones that they that worshipped them. OK. And some would some worshipped some gods, some worshipped other gods. But there was really only two sides in this, really. And that's why you got the Arab, Arab traditions, which are now still split now into more factions, Sunni, Shia. And then you had what you would call the original Judites, right? Which were split into their factions. But again, what I'm pointing out here is that you had some type of lion serpent. That's Leo. They say Leo, Draco, and Orion. Okay? But again, they, they were never like on front street. So when everything, when the population started getting very high, they moved into behind the scenes. But when they ever came around, it's like looking at these images are to let you understand almost the stature in itself. When they ever came around, it was easy to tell that they were around because they were larger and they didn't get much pushback because they had powers. And all of the smaller people or descendants, which were hybrids, demigods, Hebrews, Humans, they definitely did not want to challenge these entities. <laughs> Just so you understand, this is why the world is still steeped into worship, because they were traumatized by these beings. Now, here's the real crack. Marduk's symbol, as it's known, is an X. And it's because Marduk was a di directly, and this is, this is the picture, let me just go to it. Marduk, who, in, in the pantheon, let's say, Marduk split the earth with Nibiru, okay? So this planet, as we're seeing it, was depicted as what you see on the left. It is highly possible that the body that we're calling like Earth itself is the body of this, what they're depicting to the left. But it was split, split to a point where we even have a sky, which is cryptic. It seems to be hinting that there once was no sky. There was no separation between what we're calling the ocean and the sky until Nibiru, a.k.a. Planet X hit Earth or Tiamat and split her. And in that way, Marduk ascended in the pantheon for that. Okay, so what they're saying is, is that before Marduk, <laughs> he was like low rank, great grandson, half breed, born on Earth. But when he split Tiamat, he ranked, he ranked up and ended up being given 
in many ways, control over different parts of Earth. Now, how can we see if this is true? Take a look at this. And what I want you to ask yourself, this is a real image over at SpaceX. Doesn't that look a little strange to you? Meaning that, how long will it take humanity to realize that the extraterrestrials, quote unquote, are already here? Look at this. Look at the size of those things. Like the other day, we walked by or we drove by some windmills, you know, the big windmills. And we always have this thing that when we see these windmills, it has this eerie feeling, and, uh, the turbines, the big giant ones, it has this eerie feeling. Like when something is so large, it's dismaling. That's the term, dismal. And, you know, this is just a clip because it immediately was like, you know, as I continue to get those transmissions, look, they're already here. They're working with this dude. And now, and this was months and months ago, like this is years ago. But then when you start seeing how it all unfolds, because like you can go and find old Marduk is, is, is uh, uh, Elon Musk videos on YouTube from yours truly. But what I'm saying is, is that as things now unfold, we're in the future now, now somehow this guy is in the White House now. Like he posted on Twitter, he was in the White House uh, uh, Oval Office and he had the sink in his hand and he said, let that sink in, right? Which is somewhat of a double pun because the, that term, I mean, the, the expression is he brought everything but the kitchen sink. Right. That's the term we use in the U.S. Right. But he had the kitchen sink, meaning that, hey, I'm bringing everything. Go look at it. It's on Twitter. It's 100 million views or whatever, because he's literally taking the platform and use it as a way to be the voice and sway minds of the world. And then now everybody that he had is now rolled into everybody that Trump has. And then now they are continuously amassing. You see what I mean? And it's just like a word to the wise. It's just like realizing how these entities that have these recursive classic stories do seem to come back. Because in conclusion, the other thing about Marduk, if you know the story, is that they blew up his spaceport. Marduk was basically abandoned on Earth or trapped on Earth. <laughs> his Basically, ascendancies went back to Nibiru, which is planet X, or, we, or actually black, back to their constellation. And that I'm telling you, this is why Elon Musk has adopted the X symbol, which was what he called PayPal first. Remember, it wasn't PayPal first. It was X.com and X Incorporated. Then when he sold PayPal he didn't sell the name. He kept the rights to the name and kept the domain. Then now, here we are 20 years later after that, 15 years later, wherever, yeah, about 20 years later, and he names the company X again. So they're always talking about, hey, this guy's fixated on this X. And it's because it's Nibiru, it's Planet X, it's Marduk, who carries an X or a hammer, and that hammer is a fascia. And then you can connect all the rest of the imagery that I sent across, which will show you just how often this symbol is shown. And then finally, to be aware, once again, and that's why I say you sometimes don't want to get caught up in this. You know, you need to get yourself together, like realize your God, realize your supreme power. We we'll use that word, realize your supreme power and keep it moving. But that earth had been through these successions of the entire rulership of earth being passed over to what also still looks like Sumerian gods in stone. And these are huge, too. This is not a small relief. So, and this also a, a very popular or famous one. It basically talks about the kingship being given in the world, okay? And then you get the modern names like Ahura Mazda, which is Zoroastrian, but you would have to understand like all those Zoroastrian gods are Sumerian gods, why? Let's just look at it real quick. You've seen enough Zoroastrian stuff. Doesn't that look like, I mean, uh, 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 Sumerian stuff. 
Doesn't that look like Zoroastrian is connected definitely to Sumerian, right? Seeing that that's that same. But except for Zoroastrianism is like Christianity for the people back in the day about the original system of the Sumerian gods, meaning that by the time that drops, <laughs> Marduk has already ascended the tree and has complete control. And I've given you all these images because, and this also came courtesy of Kodosi Matsu, right? That's, wait, no, 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 no. That's not his name. Uh, what is his name? It'll probably be on one of these images because he watermarks a lot. So, but this was just things that I gathered and put into the file over time to, you know, continue to watch this process, which continuously becomes this, and also acts. Remember, Acts is definitely X. That's why X is in the word Acts, right? And the hammer. So this kind of symbolism being present in the reality, but being used in a way where most people are kind of unsuspecting. They don't really understand what this symbolism is about. And then also, it's really Hillel. It's not Lucifer, and it's definitely not Satan. But they then absorb all of those names but Hillel is correct because that is the real initiatory right inside of Freemasonry, okay? But they do show you like, just like in that movie Prometheus, they show you kind of like what we're talking about, right? He basically looks like an overpowered skinhead. He has a larger stature and he's playing the role of Prometheus or, Luc or what we would say is the modernized Lucifer. But the Shamash which is the X symbol in itself. You see that X in the back, but that X is also the cross. So all those symbols are, sign, uh, they're, okay, so let me, let me conclude, let me conclude. What does all this mean? What does this symbol mean? It, it signifies a time in which earth was conquered. That's what a cross is. Since the dawn of time, our ancestors looked to the stars for guidance. Now, ancient wisdom meets modern technology, introducing Metametrics. Navigate life's challenges with confidence, armed with predictive knowledge of your personal cycles and cosmic blueprint. Uncover hidden talents, optimize relationships, and boost your well-being with personalized insights. Sybil AI Metametrics, it's, it's ancient, ancient wisdom, wisdom from, from the, the future, future you. you. Join the movement revolutionizing self-discovery. Sybil AI Metametrics. It's the crossing of Nibiru hitting Earth. Nibiru, who is Marduk, hitting Earth. And then that causing his ascendancy in the Earth, descend, the citizens of Earth, if you may, descending because all their shit floods. Remember, it was Nibiru which caused the flood of the world because of the gravitational pull of this ship. This is, I'm still giving you the mythos, but from the Sumerian text, when Nibiru passed, the gravitational pull was so high that it destabilized Earth, and the waters went into the vault, and it split. Also, another planet, what is it called? Ayn, I think it's A-I-N, became the Milky Way. There's another name for it, and it just basically is dust of an entire planet that was hit by Nibiru, right? Planet X. So again, whether or not this is factual doesn't take away from that it was written about thousands and thousands of years ago and that when you have these modern initiates especially that are initiating themselves into these type of societies and systems, they're often going right into these Sumerian rites. They're going right into the Egyptian rites. Now, things that we need to understand is, is that Egyptian is almost like a technology in itself, a technology of being able to call up the spirits of things that are on other timelines, basically. You could call them God. You can give them different terms. But there are many different gods and positions. And also, according to uh, 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 this knowledge, it also speaks on why the pyramids are over there and they line up to Orion and, and why... Anchor Wad is way over there, and they align to Draco. And it's because that where you put these buildings on or these constructions on Earth determine what they have in correlation in what we call the cosmos, 
So if someone was worshiping another god or other gods, they would build their own pyramids or temples, which you see in Nubia. Like they're almost like acupuncture points themselves. You would see their own pyramids, temples and obelisks, but sitting on certain points on the earth. And those are like antennas. And when you're around that, you get the transmission. But in the conquering, when in the conquering of Marduk, all of the worship systems and everything came under the domain of Marduk and all of the old systems were destroyed. And this is why even York was saying, hey, I'm, Mar I'm Murdoch. I'm from the planet Marduk because basically before that destruction of what happened to Earth, you had a Nibirian society actually here on Earth, but they weren't under Marduk. They were under Anu. Then when the whole cataclysm happened, Enlil and Anu were technically on one side and children of Enlil and Anu remained on earth when they went back to Nibiru and Marduk basically took out all of his pain and all this on the children of the old Nibirians. And this is just one thing that Marduk has done on the planet. So now, again, this is why they throw this is again, if you understand symbolism. They say that Marduk is the ram in the thicket, which is what they model Baphomet off of and what they model the sacrifice, even Jesus, because we know Jesus is Marduk. And this is where you put all the doc, doc, the, put it all together. Like he's the sun king that is a literal, literal, almost like a literal man that wants the worship of others. But he plays this role that he's been sacrificed so this ram in the thicket, which is in the Old Testament, which was the ram that Abraham took, I believe. Yeah, I think it was Abraham. And he sacrificed to Yahweh first. <laughs> this is the story of Marduk. He's the sun god that was sacrificed, blah, 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 blah. Because again, the rites then get into weird stuff. And I won't elaborate on this today, but the rites are, are what you would make up as the evil magic of today. Like when they do all these weird sacrifice and blood and killing and all this kind of stuff. These are the rites, if you may. And as you can see, this stuff goes back from antiquity. But the originals, like, because a lot of times when you look at these images now, you see like sadhus, brahmins. Right, which we know is Abraham. Abraham is a Brahmin. His wife is Sarah. She's Sarah Swati, right? So you get a chance to see, hey, they, they keep fooling everybody because everybody is not united. Also, the powers of the Draco is for sure in fear and chaos. They operate in that because they don't have emotions. So while everything else is going crazy, they're rather calm because they don't, they don't feel it. But they know because, and it, it explained it specifically. I actually will copy and paste it here. We'll go into questions in a minute. But it explained why it's that way. Like why, when you don't have that faculty, like or for us, actually explain, because we have this faculty where our, the way that our neocortex is designed, it makes us care about the things that are around us and preserve each other and all that. So they started exploiting that. They started exploiting that emotional faculty that we have, not just that we're, we're nice, but that we can detect emotions and empathy. And then they created this fear-based reality where there's terror all the time, where there's things blowing up, where there's financial crises and all this kind of stuff going on because it keeps us in disarray. You look at the world there because our emotional always goes towards in that same empathy, like, hey, I want to do something about this. I want to become a part of this. I want to join. You see what I mean? So they exploit that to the teeth. So as I said before, while the factions behind the scenes may not be completely united, right, like they are beefing, they have agreed to unite on that cause of keeping human beings suppressed. The same bodies that we arrived in, the same tribes that we arrived in, Unless you are sitting right in the cabinet of the ruler, you're not in. <laughs> and you're part of the game and the chess that they play. And this would be almost in many ways through agreement, through something that you even say, yeah, this is what I want 
to happen. And that also can happen when you don't have a good picture of what else you could do. Advanced spiritual intelligence is on the rise. Like and subscribe to continue this legend and share to support the mission.